Welcome back to the 99, where we're focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and today is Mother's Day. So to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. And to all the kids with single moms, well, tell your mom I said hi. And to my mom, if you're watching this, just ignore that first part and uh, happy Mother's Day. I love you. So if you haven't guessed it from the title of this video, we will be reviewing all of Magic's history's mothers. And that is specifically cards with the name Mother in the title of the card, not mom or madre or anything else you happen to call your mother. However, I am extremely excited for this video because there's a whole host of mothers that are just fantastic. Now do note that this is all coming from the perspective of a CDH player. That is right, the superior opinion of a competitive commander player. So everything I say about these moms is gonna be accurate. Now do note that we will be critiquing our mothers today in a, a form of one to five carnations. Obviously the more carnations a card receives, the better the mother it is. And by the way, carnations, the official flower of Mother's Day. I learned that while researching this video. So see, y you can't tell me I never taught you anything new or you didn't learn something of value on the show. Although it is really late to be getting your mom flowers at this point. However, guys, if you enjoy the content on this channel, the best way to help support it and all the single mothers out there, that is a lie. We do not fund single mothers, although that could be a thing we do in the future, uh, is via Patreon. So if you want to know everything there is to know about the Patreon, there's a link in the description, but it comes with a ton of benefits, uh, a handful of which are your participation in the monthly topics, as well as a special episode dedicated to our brewmasters. So hang tight for that. If you haven't seen Brewmaster segment yet, it is a fun time. It's a live stream here that takes place of one of our cold brews every Tuesday. And guys, if you want to help support the channel indirectly, the best way to do so is via TCG player. That's right, when you buy your next pack, singles, more, flowers, bouquets, vases, I think they're selling those now. You gotta check in the link in the description, but when you use that link, you will be sending a portion of those proceeds my way, and I thank you for that. Now, as I mentioned already, there is the monthly topic to discuss, and for the month of May, what do you find more important in Commander and why? Drawing or tutoring? Now, you can't cheat asking your mom on this one, as they say mother knows best. However, what do you feel is more important to your game plan in a game of Commander, let alone CDH. Now, we've received some excellent responses already in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video today. And of course, stay tuned to the end of this video to hear the thoughts of one of our brew crew and or masters on this very topic. Now, without further ado, let's jump into our moms. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's talk about our mothers and we're gonna be going through these in alphabetical order. And this is a mom I'm very close with. This is Fairy Guide Mother. For one white creature fairy, one one body, flying. No one is so lost that a fairy can't find them. Best, best mom text. Best, best flavor text out there. Uh, she also happens to go on adventures every now and then uh, with Gift of the Fae. So for one generic, one white, sorcery speed. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains flying until the end of turn. Now in a limited environment, uh, Fairy Guide Mother was excellent. Generally speaking, when I was playing Eldraine, I found myself just playing Guide Mother as my turn one play because having 1-1 one, one flyers, 1v1, one one, is pretty potent, especially when, like, it, just the back end of this card is kind of a loose combat trick. You can't really leverage this to gain advantage at instant speed, but obviously plus two, plus one is fantastic. But generally speaking, I found myself when I was playing her just dropping her as my one drop. It's usually better to have a body on the field early so that you can operate with it, do something with it. However, in a game of Commander, I don't know, Fairy Guide Mother. Again, I love the flavor text. I love the art. I mean, by the way, the special art for this card, Eldraine had a whole bunch of cool uh, alternative art, alternative frames. I'll throw that on the screen now as well. Uh, but Eldraine really, I think, introduced these new flowy frames that they've been doing more of, if I'm not mistaken. They sort of uh, sidetracked with Amonkhet and the framing or bordering of those with the hieroglyphs and such, but Eldraine reeled it back in. And the Mystical Archives in English have similar frames, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're similar, at least to me. Uh, but yeah, excellent art, excellent flavor text. In Commander, 
Not such an excellent card, even if, and I wish there were adventures that were good in a commander setting, but there just really aren't. However, Fairy Guidemother, she's got to get at least one carnation from me. So, with one out of five carnations, you know, it, you know, we're, we're not really sending her a card this year. We might have called her, but we certainly didn't send a bouquet. Like, we're not that interested in, in appreciating her. God, this is so horrible relating this to moms. I did send, well... It's not spoiling it. I did send my mom flowers this year. She was great. I, I evaluate on a yearly basis. Was she worthy of flowers this year? <laughs> She's always worthy of flowers. Did you kids buy your mom's flowers? I hope you did. Well, Fairy Godmother, again, obviously not every card on this list is gonna be for Commander, but I don't think you're really gonna rock Fairy Godmother unless you're in like a fairy tribal list and you really want her or you're in mother tribal because you're just that cool. Next up, everyone's favorite mother, uh, aptly named Mom, is the Mother of Ruins. For one white creature, human cleric, honestly a staple in white, like one of the cards that makes white good, which is really sad to say. Uh, tap, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. So this can be Mom herself, which is really cool. Um, that's really good in a situation 1v1, but in a game of Commander, it's fantastic because she can protect herself in any instance, as well as any one of your valuable creatures, which there are a lot of. And even to this day, a majority of our legendaries in the Command Zone happen to be creatures. So Mom is taking care of them. Mother of Ruins is so darn good. I think we forget how useful protection is in the game of commander it's one of those underutilized keywords because not only does it offer protection as it states but it's very offensive as well because when you offer a creature protection from a given color let's just say i'm fighting a gitrog and i want to get in on that player if i say either green or black my creature um it can't be mom in this instance but let's just say my commander is going to be able to get in there and swing past the gitrog because protection is basically like land walk human walk <laughs> player walk it's it's saying that i can get in there no matter what unless there was a creature that was like solely green or solely black but obviously you're choosing the color before you even make the swing so you have knowledge prior to going at it um but protection is fantastic it's one of my favorite keywords hyper underutilized uh is the one one body of mother of ruins worthy of a handful more carnations than fairy guide mother my family protects all families. Hell yes, Scott Fisher! He knows it. Oh, these foils, by the way. Uh, I won't put this one on the screen. I'll have you look it up. Or just, you know, purchase it from TCG Player. But there is a Friday Night Magic version of Mom. That's fantastic. Five out of five carnations. Can we give a round of applause for Mother of Ruins? This is a good card. It's a good card. It's such an excellent turn one play. It really doesn't get better than that. At least in white. If you're limited to white and you're using a strategy that cares about getting in and doing damage, mom is fantastic for it. And or you just want to protect your pieces, mom is fantastic for it. Mother of Ruins, high up on the list for me. There aren't that many cards that got five out of five carnations, but Mother of Ruins deserved it. Now, next up, all the way from Modern Horizons. <laughs> and it, what's funny is we're coming up on Modern Horizons too, if I'm not mistaken. So. Um, by the time you're watching, there's, there might be a handful of spoilers. I think they've sort of leaked out a few spoilers at this point. I don't know if those are officially spoiled or what. I've, I've seen a handful of really good cards. However, Mother Bear. For one generic, one green, creature bear, 2-2 two -two body. It's a bear. It's a bear. So it's a 2 for 2-2. Two -two. Um, however, <laughs> this is kind of cool, by the way. So for a 3 generic, double green, exile Mother Bear from your graveyard, create 2... 2-2 two, two, green bear creature tokens activate only as a sorcery now my qualm with this ability is the fact that it can only be activated as a sorcery i don't understand like if you're i don't want to bring this up on mother's day if your mom went to the graveyard was was buried using some old verbiage from mtg wouldn't you think that the cubs would go um, with immediacy? Like that you could do it anytime? It's a little odd to me that this is limited. And I get it's at common. I get the ability is really good in a grindier game, a longer game. You know, this was clearly not designed for commander. However, 
it really bothers me that 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 has to be sorcery speed it'd be great that you can save your resources to do this off turn potentially and or use removal off turn or whatever colors you might be in in this instance this would have been a really cool ability to activate um, off turn however it is limited by the speed i still think the ability is really effective and for those two baby cubs I'm gonna give this two carnations. Two out of five carnations for the mother bear. Um, not as good as Mother of Ruins, not as versatile in a CDH setting, a commander setting. However, the ability is really cool. I wanna see more effects like this, activated abilities outside um, of the battlefield, like in the grave. They're fantastic. You know, uh, we don't see enough of these types of abilities in the game, or at least the useful ones. You know, I think reanimating skeleton is probably the one that gets leveraged the most. And that's about it. Glory's really cute. But there's not that much I actively see in a commander setting. So it'd be cool to see something that was really versatile that you could activate in the grave. Uh, but at any rate, I guess, I guess we have like flashback on that one particular card, the Dread Return. That's really cool. That was utilized for a good while, but you don't really see Dread Return either. At any rate, moving on. Uh, there are, if I'm not mistaken, 13 cards to cover, so we're not even halfway through this mom list. Smother. Smother, babies. So, uh, there's Mother in there. This is actually a really sweet card. So for one generic, one black, instant speed, destroy target creature with mana value three or less. It can't be regenerated. Uh, instant speed, obviously, this wouldn't be very good without it. Uh, there are a couple copies of this card. The art I'm going to put on the screen is... <laughs> is the one I enjoy. Now, it's just like getting a big old hug and a kiss from mom, right? That's how it feels sometimes. Like you're getting smothered. Now, with smother, how many carnations does this receive, right? I know that's what you're wondering. I know that's why you all tuned in this week. Personally speaking, if this was one mana value, if this was just the black, isn't it? Didn't it? No. It came out originally in Onslaught. It'd be cool if that black was Phyrexian mana, because this is arguably a very playable card. It's like actually really decent removal. Mana value of three or less, that is every hate bear. That is every hate bear in the game of Magic right now. That is of relevance. Like from Archon of Emeria to your Dranith Magistrates, to your Hull Breachers, to your Opposition Agents, to a large variety of commanders from Najila to Savala. Like this hits a lot of things. It's just the two CMC kind of drags it down for most folks. Oh my gosh, I say CMC? I'm in mana value. Please, Watsy. Please. Um, yeah, two CMC is pretty freaking good um, for this effect. However, we kind of want these abilities to be as skinny as possible. Okay, put on a few COVID pounds, as they've been saying. Um, if it was one mana value, it would probably be played a lot uh, as it stands. I would say this gets like three out of five carnations. Three out of five carnations. Is that what I wrote down? Yeah, three out of five carnations. Because this is quite good for the effect. Again, everything I listed off, it does a lot. Now, obviously, the only way this can be expanded upon were if it was Exile, which Black is getting a more of these days. Like, if Deadly Rollick is a sign of more things to come, like effective, wonderful, sweet Exile, that would make this even better. And obviously making this permanent instead so we can hit those pesky enchantments at instant speed then it would be super playable but as it stands smother it's gonna get a solid three out of five carnations in my book moving on now i want you all to note that we are we're not including moms or madres did i say that off the bat we're not including moms or madres but we are including silver bordered cards next up we have mother of goons for two generic, one black. Creature, human cleric. Three, two body. Hot damn. It's some of the best art in magic, by the way. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, sacrifice mother of goons unless you insult that creature. Word to me. So, mother of goons. I think just flavor-wise, because this is clearly not a playable card, flavor-wise, this is five out of five carnations. Can we give it up to the Mother of Goons? Not that she wants to be seeing flowers on Mother's Day. You know, this gal clearly wants... <laughs> clearly wants coffee? What are these goons even holding in the back there? Gang sign. Hell yeah. 
These are some goofy goons and one sick ass mom. Everything about this card is wonderful. Um, I love the triggered ability. <laughs> Obviously, it's not very good, but it's hilarious. Um, you would never play this even if it were possible to play this. I guess if you were doing a meme deck, uh, maybe your you know, table would let you play this as the legendary for a mono black meme deck. It's fantastic. Oh my gosh, worst sneezing fit on the show ever. Let me know if you want me to not edit that out next time, if you just want to see me in complete misery. <sighs> is this a cut I'm gonna take? Yeah, this is the one. Okay, why not? Phyrexian Batmother. <laughs> Too generic, double black, creature horror, infect, four five body. What does that mean, folks? Well, when you have infect, you deal damage in the form of negative one, negative one counters to creatures and poison counters to opponents. So that's pretty darn good. You're not getting there, right? They they consciously made her a 4-5 as opposed to a 5-5, five five, because that would have been useful. Um, but it is a rare, there's only one printing, so we gotta hype this up somehow. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you get a poison counter. Okay, well, we just lost it. We just, mom, really? 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 Oh, that's where the additional poison from the 4-5 instead of the 5-5 five five we're missing is coming from. It's going to us. Not good. Uh, that's not good at all. Obviously, Infect, there are Infect strategies out there in the World Commander. I think Call of the Horde is the big Infect card. It's a really great way to just blow out a board, provided you have enough bodies doing enough damage. Mind you, you only need to give your opponents 10 poison counters to knock them out. They have auto lose the game at that point. So that's a lot easier to do than 40 life. I'm sorry, Bad Mother. You're clearly a penny rare. I'm not even sure this is worth any carnations, but because it's Mother's Day, one out of five carnations to the Bad Mother. Don't, don't play Bad Mother. This next card, however, this next card's actually pretty dece. Smother ing abomination that's right two generic double black it's very similar a lot of black cards with mother in the name creature eldrazi devoid this card has no color i lied to you this has, this card has no color um however do note that color identity and card color are separate from one another you can't put this in a colorless deck if you're playing commander it's still considered a black card uh, by virtue of the black pips and its casting cost. So, way to make an interesting keyword moot. Way to make it useless. Um, flying, 4-3 body. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Well, how is that good, Pat? Um, it's interesting, okay, with token generators because whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. That's actually a really cool effect to just have on a card. So. Obviously, if you've got some sort of engine set up with token, value tokens, and or commander that's producing tokens. I had to think there. Lathril. <laughs> Lathril cares, right? We just did Lathril on the show. Uh, she makes tokens pretty easily. Well, here's something to put in the 99 for you. Uh, do I think it a mana value of four that this is your best draw engine in Golgari specifically? Not necessarily, but you'll be able to determine that better just based off of the colors you are allowed to use. Now, obviously, if this was a mono blacklist and you're generating a lot of tokens, this is actually decent. Now, the thing is, um, you don't have to sacrifice it with that triggered ability. That's just giving you the draw that you're wanting to get with that last ability, right? So at the beginning is a self-fulfilling prophecy for that last effect. So at the end of the day, if this was the only thing on the board, well, then this is just four mana, draw one card uh, with a huge delay which is okay, which is still okay. But I think this is a build around three out of five carnations in my book. Like this is actually an okay card uh, so far as the mothers are concerned. So let's get another point on the board for mom, huh? So now this next card, Smothering Abomination. What comes after that in the alphabet, kids? Smothering Tithe. Now this is everyone's favorite go-to. You gotta ramp, gotta go quick and white. I never use this card. I own this card. I'm sure I've shat on this card in previous conversations, but let's just have a separate one today. For three generic, one white, enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two mana. 
If that player doesn't, you create a treasure token, and we all know what that is thanks to Dockside Extortionist teaching the world what treasures are in MTG. Well, treasures are artifacts that you can tap, sacrifice, and create one mana of any color. So, Smothering Tide lets you do that anytime someone draws a card. Oh, everyone draws cards just regularly in this game, so that's actually not horrible. So the thing is, that the cost of this card is what puts it so far behind for me, personally. I don't play it in any of my lists because by the time I get it out in a deck that's mostly consistent of white, I've already done everything that I could have been doing with that hand, and I'm not drawing cards in this color, so what am I to do with all these treasures? Unless you got some sort of strategy that cares about the artifacts entering the battlefield, or just having artifacts, like <laughs> giving Docksides more of their own treasures. White doesn't utilize this card very well, so it's generally splashed into more aggressive lists. But then again, it's four mana, so you're really relying on people not paying for this, which is generally the case. So when you do land this, and if you land it early, it's very good. It's very good. Usually people don't touch Smothering Tithe, but it's just not worth the effort. And you're also just wasting removal to benefit your opponents, right? Not only did you use your removal to get rid of Smothering Tithe, so you put yourself in this one person slightly back in this game you're giving these two other players an opportunity to get by past whatever removal you used right so is smothering tithe a really great card in that it kind of equalizes the game for you in that you can ramp pretty hard with it potentially like obviously if someone does a brainstorm or someone does like any sort of card quality effect in blue it's going to trigger this a whole bunch of times right because it's not uh, one or more cards whatever an opponent draws a card so you get a trigger for each individual draw. In that case, it's okay. You know, they would have, you know, done their card quality effect, their cantrip in response to this on the stack. But if they didn't and they really want to dig, then they're just going to offer you treasures. So if your plan requires a lot of mana, four to five carnations. Okay, I'm going to give it four to five carnations because people like this card. It's clearly $40 for a reason. If you want to own a copy, let me know. I'll sell you mine. I'll sell you mine. Because I'm really not using this mother card. This mother flippin' tithe. Uh, but there are people that do. And that's good for you. I'm just not a fan of it. Next up on the list is Grandmother Sengir. So for... <laughs> oh, yeah, can we just take a moment to look at this art? Man. Pete Venner's really captured it. By the way, Pete Venner is like one of my favorite artists. I've been in and out of Magic for a while, but when I got back into Magic around the Time Spiral block, there was this card called Chrono Savant. Every time I think of Pete Venner's, I, I think of Chrono Savant. It's a horrible card. Uh, let me look it up. It's it's this giant. I'll just see if I can remember it. It's a big giant that comes back from the graveyard if you pay mana, but if you do that, uh, you skip your next turn. So it's like mega summoning sick. But the art for that card uh, really got me hooked. Like something about the art and magic just is such a huge part of this game for me at least. A little personal anecdote on Grandmother Sanger here because I don't have too much to say about her, but Pete Venner's, I love your work, man. Mother Sanger, a little hideous, not my favorite. Chrono Savant is my favorite of yours. However, is she good? How many carnations is the legendary creature, human wizard, four generic, one black, three, three body worth? Well, let's look at that ability first. Rarely have power and madness been so delightfully wed as they have in our dear grandmother. Because that's how Baron Singer talks. Uh, if you pay one generic, one black, and tap this gal, target creature gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. Well, you know, I'm sure this was great in Homelands when this card came out, but... Dang, Grandma. I'm not even sure. I guess I still like this more than the Phyrexian Vat Mother. Is that is that bad of me? <laughs> I, I still just, if only for the art, to intimidate my foes. But Grandma Sanger is more like a one out of five carnation sort of gal. I'm not sure we're really going to honor her the way she deserves this year. Because her ability is kind of weak. But... Love the art. Love you, Pete. Thank you for this one. Um, <laughs> that ability is not going to save this card, though. Next up, one more Silver Border card to discuss. And we got so many great moms to go, by the way. Mothers. 
to go. But Mother Kangaroo. So this is an interesting card that came from uh, Unstable or un Unsanctioned. It was in both. I forget which one it originally came in, but there was a feature in that set called Augmentations. And basically you had a host body and then an augment you can place on it, but the host bodies were pretty decent by themselves. And Mother Kangaroo for four generic, one green host creature kangaroo, one one body. Whenever this creature enters the battlefield, roll a one six sided die. Put a number of plus one plus one counters on this creature equal to the result. Well, that's really good. If this was playable at all, that's actually really decent. So it's like a five for a seven seven potentially. A five for a seven seven. I mean, they could have been really rude and made it a zero zero. Right? How could they word this so that it would either enter as a one one to a six six? I guess they just didn't want to deal with that. But basically, you can have a really beefy kangaroo or a really weak kangaroo. However, this is a really cool card. I think that Augment is something I would love to see implement. Because, you know, most of these unsets are sort of like a playground for them to test different abilities or different keywords or different um, card structuring to see if it would work well. So they implement it there and potentially put it in uh, upcoming sets. Uh, this would be something cool to see in the future. So maybe three out of five carnations for the mother kangaroo. Hopefully we get host slash augment in future sets or some variation of this uh, because it's really cool. Have we gotten a variation of this? We sort of got that in Ikoria, right? Right with the, um, what is it called? What is it called when a creature jumps on another creature? It's not <laughs> uh, animal planet. Uh, I don't remember what that's called, but Ikoria had it. It wasn't good though. It was pretty just okay. Um, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm not gonna look it up as it's not worth your time or my time because we gotta talk about the dragon broodmother for two generic, triple red, and one green. It's a gruel dragon. Creature dragon, four, four body. I'll stop there. Flying at the beginning of each upkeep, create a one, one red and green Dragon creature token. Uh, oh my god. Smothering, smothering abomination territory. <laughs> well, you need to be in Jund, but you know. A creature token with Devour 2. It's a flying dragon. With Devour 2. So, as this token enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. It enters the battlefield with twice that many plus one, plus one counters on it. So that's the idea with Devour. If it was Devour 1, you'd get, you know, 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter for each creature devoured, so on and so forth for any given number. Uh, is this good? You really need a lot of bodies for this to warrant its cost. Like, you're also doing this, I wish it was that the, your end step would be actually useful. Right? Because if you really look at this, this is a what? This is a 6 mana value card for a 4-4 four, four flying dragon. That's just okay. Like that's very much common territory. And the fact that you don't get anything really out of this until you get to your next upkeep. And all that potential is, is to have a flyer swinging on the next turn. Very sluggish. Mind you, you know, you have Concordant Crossroads, you have Mass Hysteria, you have ways to haste enable a, a field for Gruel. Like there's a ton of ways to haste enable your field. Um, will it, what, Call of the Wild, Will of the Wild, something in the wild. The, our, our boy Domri's on the card. Gosh, I really like that card. I forget the name of the card. It doesn't matter. Because Dragon Brood Mother, you, you're going to get two out of five carnations at best. Like, the ability is fine. It's a token generation, a generator in Gruul. That's okay. But these creatures aren't great. I kind of wish that the Dragon Brood Mother had Devour, but then you're sort of devouring the things that the babies want to eat. I don't know, gang. I don't know. And like your baby dragons can cannibalize each other if that's something you want to do. That's just weird. This is wrong. This card's wrong. I think I wrote down two out of five carnations. We're going to give this one out of five. I'm sorry. I don't know where my head was at. Just saying these things out loud. Not good. And you're a $7, $5 card? How is that? Who's playing with Dragon Broodmother? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'll suggest some better cards. We can, we can fix this. We'll find a way. On Mother's Day, it's it's understandable. Play with the brood mother. But any other time of the year, stop. There are better cards. Sakiko. Mother of Summer. I think that's how you pronounce this.
For four generic double green legendary creature snake shaman. Man, am I attracted to a snake right now? Maybe. Three three body. Whatever creature you control deals combat damage to a player. Add that much green. Until the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Yes, I read the eroded text there. This can be your commander. That is a lot of mana. Um, this is really cool mana generation in green. Unfortunately, Sakiko is like... Sakiko is a very much overshadowed by all of the other mana generators in this color. Like, Rafelos, why in the world is he banned? Better. Uh, better than that? Maybe Savala, better than Rafelos and Sakiko, for that matter. Marwin. There's a variety of legendaries that do the same trick, but in, in a different way. Now, I'm sure that there's a cool aggro-based strategy for this. However, in mono green, like you're sort of missing out on aggravated assault, all the additional combats that you, that you, you know, this mana sort of thrives on. It's okay. I, I really like this card. I wish that there was a better way to implement a strategy for this effect in mono green but there's not necessarily if you guys have a mother of summer list uh please share it in the comment section i'd love to see your approach on her because i think this is a really cool commander but the other thing setting her back is that mana value like six is pretty high so i'm gonna give this three out of five carnations because i really love the ability like it's on any creature you control so to include uh sakiko She's doing, she's a 3-3, so that's three mana right there. This is really good ramp going into your next turn. She could really use it herself to cast herself, but you get the idea. She's fine. She deserves to be more than Dragon Broodmother. She's only less than $4. Make a list for this card before you make a list for Dragon Broodmother is what I'm saying. At any rate, last card on our list. The last mother we'll be discussing. And I am horribly biased when it comes to this card because I absolutely love it. This is Wart. The Raid Mother. So if you haven't seen the deck tech on Wart, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's a very cool um, legendary. This is a fantastic commander to work with because the ability is extremely unique. And these colors leverage it fairly well. So for 4 generic, Gruul Gruul. 6 CMC total. It's the same camp as Sakiko, but um, the ability is so worth it. When Ward the Raid Mother enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red and green Goblin Warrior creature tokens. So you're getting a total attack defense value of 5-5 five, five on the board when Ward is cast. If you've got ways to blink this or duplicate this or, you know, there are ways to make more goblins out of this, should you like, if you have a sub-strategy for that. And you could. Because each red and green instant or sorcery spell you cast has Conspire, and Conspire lets you tap two creatures that share a color with a said sorcery or instant spell, right? To allow you to, um, as an additional cost, Conspire it and create a copy of it. You place that copy on the stack. So you double down on any instant or, or sorcery spell on your list. This is fantastic with, and again, I'll just highly encourage you to watch my War of the Raid Mother deck tech because I cover all of the core strategies I find work best with her. But the general idea is anything with as additional cost in its casting cost, you cheat around that fact when you make a copy. So any rummage effect like Thrill of Possibility, where it says you need to discard a card to draw two cards, well you can discard a card, conspire this with either Ward, one of your two goblins, just the two goblins or any other creatures you control, to create another Thrill of Possibility. So for one discard you draw four cards right? That's really good value. And there are a ton of rummage effects. There have been a ton more since I released that video, as a matter of fact. So Ward is only growing stronger. She's like one of those legendaries that's a fine wine. It gets better with time, right? Because the strategy is there. The strategy being copy a creature to field tutor effect to set up a one, two, like an A plus B combo. I mean, Kiki Jiki, Zealous Conscripts, if you ever wanted to do that in CDH, Ward's your gal. I really love this commander. Again, I'm super biased, so Wart for me gets five out of five carnations. I'm giving you, I'm throwing in a sixth one, Wart. That's how much I like you. Um, she's one of my favorite legendaries. Of course I'm gonna like her. She's actually the first commander I ever worked on, so I'm super biased. Super biased. Um, get the Shadow Moor version, or get the Commander 20, it doesn't matter. 
They're all good, they all play the same. I have the Shadow Moor version because I'm one of those snobs. But guys, that, that is it! That is it for our mothers! Uh, can you believe it? That, that's all the moms we're gonna see today? Hopefully not, I hope you spend your evening with your mom. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I do mean that. To all the single moms, we love you. To all the moms that are married, just not as much. To my mom, you're the best. And, gang, thank you so much for joining me on this one. Is there a mother I missed, or is there a mom that you really enjoy? Tell me about your favorite mother in the world of MTG. But now, as I do with every video, I'd like to close this one out by thanking one of our Patreon members, and by complete randomnicity, that Patreon member is Student Eternal. Student is a long-standing brew baby here on the channel, and I thank you so much for your patronage. You are among the best, but you really don't need to hear me say that. You already know. And for his thoughts on the monthly topic, I'll be reading for brew crew member Carl329. It can be situational, but in general, I would say draw is more important. You can draw into the win conditions and answers to problematic cards and spells. If you only tutor, you'll almost never be up cards. You want mana sources, protection for your win cons, interaction for the table, the actual win cons themselves, and if you just tutor, it will be hard to have a handful of all of it. If your opening hand has two lands and acceleration and you just tutor the rest of the game, then you will probably never have access to more than three or four cards at any time. Also, top deck tutors get much worse without a way to draw the card into your hand. Obviously, a mix of both is best, if you have a very proactive deck that is trying to dump its hand and win turns one through three, then tutors get better. If you want a more consistent deck or mid-range deck with less compact win conditions than draw, is much more desirable. And that will do it for this video, gang. Do you think I was fair on these mothers of MTG? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear how many carnations you gave Mother of Ruins, Mother of Goons, and Wart the Raid Mother. But again, my name is Patrick Marlette, and happy brewing, babies.